Welcome to the St. Francis Prep Virtual College Fair. We're excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping announcements. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website for more. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash SFP. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Western Connecticut State University. Hello everyone, my name is Megan Hastings and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at WCSU. Um, Western Connecticut State University is located in Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, and we have a split campus location, which makes our school a little bit unique. Um, we have two locations within the Danbury area. They're about 10 minutes apart, and the campuses are split pretty evenly in terms of um, the university. Uh, we have four schools at WCSU. Um, they are our Ansel School of Business, our Macrocosta School of Arts and Sciences, our Visual Informing Arts School, and our School of Professional Studies, which I'll get into a little bit more on the next page. Um, Western as a whole is a medium-sized university with about 5,200 total students on campus, including our graduate students. Um, we have over 50 degree programs across those four schools, um, which makes our, our class sizes about 25 per class, um, especially when you get into your junior and senior year, you're gonna have even smaller classes than that. Um, our student faculty ratio is about 12 to one. In terms of uh, how the locations are split up, freshmen live on our Midtown campus in a communal style residence hall with one roommate and you share a bathroom with your floor. And then over on our West Side location, we have suite style apartments um, where you would select a group of roommates to live with. Uh, we have guaranteed housing all four years. Freshmen are, are allowed to have a car on campus all four years as well. Um, and then we have a shuttle service that takes students back and forth between the two campuses. In terms of student life, we have over 75 clubs and organizations on campus, ranging from student government association to academic clubs to an outdoor adventure club. Um, I could try to name all 75, but we definitely don't have enough time for that today. Um, we are division three for athletics. Uh, fairly newer to our sport rosters are uh, men and women's cross country, men's golf and men's swimming and diving. We also have club sports on campus, um, a dance team, a cheer team, men's ice hockey, and then men and women's rugby. Um, and then in terms of recreation for students, we have two gyms, one on each campus. Uh, we have uh, fitness courses as well that you can take in between classes um, and intramural sports. Uh, we're actually in the process of renovating Berkshire Hall on campus to be our new student center and recreation center uh, for our students. In terms of our schools, uh, our Ansel School of Business is accredited by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, quite a mouthful. Um, our largest program under that school is actually Justice and Law Administration, which is a fancy name for criminal justice. And then we have our general business programs in cybersecurity. Our Macrocosta School of Arts and Sciences is actually our largest school on campus, home to 13 departments and 18 programs, including psychology, communications, uh, biology, and chemistry, which are popular among our pre-health profession majors. Our School of Visual Performing Arts is very well known for its music program and musical theater programs. Um, and then our School of Professional Studies is home to nursing, social work, education. In terms of the application process for WCSU, we are on the common application. That is the only way you can apply as a first time student. We look for a student with about a B average and an ele around 1100 SAT score. Uh, we are also test optional. If you're applying test optional, we do require letters of recommendation. In terms of deadlines, we are rolling admissions. So we don't have a set admission deadline, but we prefer that you apply by March 1st. Um, and in terms of cost of tuition, Students from Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey receive in-state tuition at WCSU. So if you're living on campus, your total cost of tuition is about $25,742. Uh, we do offer merit-based scholarships ranging from $2,000 to $10,000, um, and you are screened for those throughout the application process. And if you receive a merit-based scholarship, you'll get noticed within your acceptance packet. 
uh, FAFSA opens on October 1st, so make sure you start applying and we do require you to apply by March 1st. Um, and then in terms of visiting campus, we are offering many open houses this fall, um, one for each of our school. We have visit sessions on Saturdays showcasing both of our locations. We're also offering daily campus tours, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then we have a lot of virtual events as well available to students. Excellent, thank you very much, Megan. Uh, next up is gonna be the University of Connecticut. Thank you so much for having me tonight. My name is Dan Teague. I'm an admission officer at the University of Connecticut. Um, and we will hop right in here. Let me just share my screen. Wonderful. Oops, yeah. Oh, it's backwards. Sorry about that, folks. All right. So UConn is the flagship state university in Connecticut. Uh, we founded in 1881 as an agricultural university, um, but we have grown to support numerous different academic programs uh, with over 24,000 students across five campuses. Oh, sorry about that. Um, we are, again, a very large campus or throughout Connecticut. Uh, top 25 public university. We're also a research one university. Um, I'll focus on stores today as that's our main campus, but we do have four regional campuses throughout the state as well. Um, as I mentioned, stores, this gives you an idea of where we're located throughout the state. Um, stores is the main campus. Currently, we have about 11,500 students uh, residing on campus. Pre-pandemic, we would have about 12,500, so we're very close to capacity, and we're very excited about that. Um, UConn Stanford is the only other campus that offers housing in the state, but we do also have three other regional campuses for students to check out as well. Um, you can see that there are large metropolitan areas within driving distance, Boston, uh, Providence, and then New York City. So while there are a lot of attractions in the area, we do also have um, a lot of metropolitan areas within driving distance for students to check out. This is a little bit about or, um, athletics and then student life. So I think a lot of people do know UConn through our athletics first, um, but we do have first rate academics as well. Um, 21 division one NCAA programs, 37 club sports teams and numerous different sports for students to take advantage of as well. Uh, 700 plus campus organizations that range from large national ones, um, even down to small niche clubs. And then um, when it comes to housing, we have 99 residence halls on campus, um, ranging from traditional dorm style, suite style, and then apartment style housing. Uh, we do have 33 learning, living learning commons on campus as well uh, for first and second year students to take advantage of. Um, they are specific to academic or social interest as well. Uh, we have Greek life on campus, so 30 fraternities and sororities throughout campus. And then um, we do also make our own ice cream on campus at the Yukon Dairy Bar, which is, in my opinion, some of the best ice cream around. And then obviously, we do want to speak about academics. That's the name of the game here. Um, so 115 plus majors, 320 plus minors across 10 schools and colleges. Uh, the student to faculty ratio is 16 to 1. The average class size is anywhere from like 18 to 20. Um, you may see some larger courses for your first year in general education courses, uh, but as you get further into your majors, it is going to be that around 18 to 23. Um, then when it comes to the most popular programs that we have at the university, biological sciences and psychological sciences are our most popular majors, but we do also have something called the ACES Undeclared Program for students uh, to kind of explore programming throughout their first two years of their academics. Um, a quarter of our students do start off in that program every year. And this is speaking a little bit about um, selective programming at the university. So those on the left there are definitely a little bit more selective. For engineering and nursing, we do require students to complete chemistry and physics. Um, below, those are junior entry programs that students would take prerequisite coursework to be um, offered admission to for the fall of their uh, junior year. And then the special programs there on the left are coordinated curriculum where students students with the ability to um, gain a graduate level degree thereafter. Um, so some people will call those four plus three, four plus two programs. Um, they're really a pathway to graduate school for students. Um, again, those are the most competitive programs at the university to gain admission to. Um, we do also have an honors program. We took about 560 students for this incoming year. Um, and our incoming class was around 3,700. So that gives you an idea of the, the, you know, the percentage of students that are offered that opportunity. Uh, 
We did go test optional as well. So last year was our first year. Um, it's a three-year pilot. Um, that is our averages. So that kind of is basically, um, if you're above the average, I would recommend submitting. And uh, below the average, obviously, I would recommend not submitting. Um, but it is up to the student. They have the choice up till January 20th to uh, declare whether they would like to or not. Um, and we re really did do that to respond to um, this gives you an idea of what we're looking for in our application requirements. I'm not going to go over that too much. Um, the one thing that we did add new is a self-reported academic record for students to be able to self-report their um, academics rather than um, waiting for the transcript. This is our application timeline. Um, so we're a regular decision institution. We don't have early action or early decision deadlines. Uh, so December 1st is our priority deadline. I do recommend all students to try and complete their applications by then. Um, gives you priority for merit, um, honors consideration, or special program. Uh, January 15th is the on-time application deadline. FAFSA, uh, as Megan mentioned, opens up on October 1st, closes February 15th. Um, March 1st is when our decisions will drop to students. Um, so just for the sheer amount of applications that we receive on any given year, it does take us a little while to move through those and offer equitable opportunities. Uh, May 1st is the regional campus deadline, which may or may not pertain to y'all, um, but it is also the national candidate reply date. And that's when folks like myself from universities will reach out and kind of get a feel for where you stand. Um, and that is really all I have. This just gives you a little information for visit days, um, but I'll put my email in the, in the chat and uh, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, next up is the University of New Haven. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sneeka Mills from the University of New Haven, and I'll just go through like a small presentation that we do have to share with our students, protect the students. On here. Okay, so we are located in West Haven, Connecticut, which is not too far from um, New York City. I'll say it's about an hour, maybe 45 minutes, close to two hours away. Um, please forgive my background. I don't, my grandfather's doing something downstairs and I'm upstairs. So if you do hear music, please ignore that. Um, but we are about an hour and 45 minutes away from um, New York City, not too far from Boston either. So we do have like other surrounding areas. Um, this is just like a little view of what our campus looks like. Um, so we have about 5,000 undergrad, over 100 plus programs and majors. We have 85 minors and certificates and about 35 um, grad degrees. Um, our class size is about 20 and um, we have over 100 50 clubs and organizations. Um, with our with our majors and programs here on the university, you can join a dual degree program, which can be a three plus one, which is a four year program, or a um, four plus one, or maybe three plus two, which is a five year program. So we do offer that for our students. Um, just explaining who is a charger. Um, we are close to 50-50 most times, at least 65% of students are residential, even though that 65% seems like very, it's very small. Um, a good amount of first year students do live on campus. Um, we are all over the place, about 41 different states, 55 foreign countries, and at least 90% of our faculty and staff do hold a PhD or higher in their field. So you are being taught by someone who's a professional that's been in the field for quite some time. Um, so it's not just like anybody who studied the subject. Um, they've actually been within that subject. Um, we do have five different colleges. We have a College of Arts and Science. We have a um, Pompeii College of Business, the Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences, Tagletelia College of Engineering and School of Health Sciences. Um, within these five schools, um, there are different majors that students can get into. Um, we do have open houses coming up for each of these colleges. So um, you can go to our website, newhaven.edu slash visit to see what dates that we have available. Um, this is just some of the different organizations that students have interned at or they are currently working there. Um, we have a study abroad option with over 100 plus um, programs. It can either be a semester year long. Ooh. Oh my goodness. 
it can be at least a semester long or year long or two week that's very like intensive um we do have a Prado campus in italy as well so students can go over there we do send at least 16 first year students over to italy for the first time so that's really a great experience instead of them moving to new haven they are moving to italy um, student life, there's a lot to be involved because board is not an option here on campus. Like I mentioned before, there's over 150 clubs and organizations. Um, residential life, there are five different residential halls that first year students do live in. Most of them are suite style and at least one building is traditional. Um, freshmen, first year students cannot have their car on campus, um, but we are trying to make it mandatory for first year students to live on campus at least. Um, but it's cool. We have, um, we have we have communities where um, the students are separated within their majors and they'll have a whole floor as their major or um, it'll be like by their interest, whether that's how they select roommates. Um, we are division two in athletics and we do have over 18 varsity sports plus 18 club sports. Um, so either the student wants to be a part of the um, the an, an athlete at the university, they can do that. Or if they decide to do club sports, they can do that as well. But something unique that we have is that we do have a blue turf football field. Um, our application process, you can find us on the Common app. Um, and if you're looking for fee waivers, we do have them online. We are test optional this year. Um, you can submit a letter of recommendation, your high school transcript, and um, this year we're also optional for a um, essay as well so really and truly what's mandatory is your letter of recommendation and your high school transcript your sat or act scores are optional as well as your essay now we have different application types this year we have two early we have two early decision options which is early decision one and two which are binding and if you're not trying to bind with the university you have early action um, deadline, which is December 15th, and then regular decision, which is a priority deadline on March 1st. So you can either do early action or regular decision when you're clicking off on your common app. Our scholarships, our scholarships range from 10,000 to 28,000 in three different categories. Um, you do get them automatically once you've been um, accepted into the university. We also have additional scholarships. We have an honor scholarship, portfolio scholarship, marching band, Pompeii scholarship, and the thigh the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship, which is for transfer students. If you have any questions, you can um, contact admissions at newhaven.edu or give us a call. Thank you very much. Um, just a reminder to our audience, please submit any questions um, to any of our panelists via the Q&A feature. And next up is the University of Hartford. Hi everyone, my name is Kayla Soto. I'm one of the assistant directors at the University of Hartford. So just a glance of you, Hart, we were founded in 1877, um, we became the University of Hartford in 1957. Um, we are located in West Hartford, Connecticut. However, we are on the town line of Bloomfield in Hartford, Connecticut. So we're about a two hour drive from, um, from Boston and New York City. So we're right in the middle. Um, on campus, there's easy access to bus stations, um, Bradley Airport, and there is a campus shuttle. Um, we have about 6,000 students. Um, our class sizes are about 17 to 20, um, and our student, our faculty and student um, ratio is eight to one. So we do have seven colleges, and within these seven colleges, you'll find different programs, different majors, and organizations. So we have the Hartford Art School, the, um, which is all of our art work, all of our art students um, attend. Then we also have the Hart School, which is all our musical performances. We have Barney School of Business. Um, that's all of our business analytics uh, majors. We have College of Engineering, Technology, and Architecture. And then we have um, the College of Education, Nursing, and Health Professions. It's actually one of our biggest colleges. And then we have Hillier College, um, College of Arts and Science as well. What's new around campus? So we just opened up this fall. Um, one of the um, 
major things in on our campus is the Hersey Center. So this is actually um, images of our Hersey Center. So this is our newest building. Um, this building is specifically for our engineering students and our nursing students as well, um, physical therapy and occupational therapy as well. So we have brand new labs, um, high tech, um, uh, high tech labs. Um, we have stimulation labs. Um, we also um, have different um, study um, places for our students as well in the center. So everything is brand new. Um, and then um, they were able to open this up August of 2021. So a network for su support, um, we have our um, Center for Student Success. Um, we actually have a program called You Heart Strong that's specifically for our first generational students and our first year students um, just for extra support. Um, we have a career in professional development, and that's specifically um, for uh, resume building, um, any um, mock interviews, and that's um, free of access to all our students. We also have the Office of Student Engagement and Inclusion, our international um, center, and then also study abroad. So if anybody's interested in studying abroad, that's something that you would want to bring up um, during your freshman year. Um, we do have residential um, life. We offer four years um, residential service. And then we also have um, dining services as well. We do have 100 plus um, clubs and organization. We have non-academic. We have um, honors organization. We do um, offer um, legit um, athletics as well. Um, we are currently division one, but we are transitioning to division three as well. Applying to UHART. So um, we are on the Common App and we do um, have um, an application on our website as well. So um, you can apply either or. We do have a $35 application um, fee. However, it's waived if you um, apply before November 15th or, um, um, or December 15th. Those are both our early action um, dates. Um, however, we are rolling in mission um, and we do offer merit scholarships. Um, Mostly all um, applicants are eligible for merit scholarships. Um, and then we do offer need-based aid as well. Um, and then our FAFSA opens up October 1st as well. Um, so the resp you're responsible um, for um, letter of recommendations, um, filling out a personal statement, and also um, we are test optional as well. So you don't have to um, send in your SAT or ACT scores. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us um, via email or um, through phone. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kayla. And next up is Quinnipiac University. Hello, my name is Kayla Dale. I am one of the counselors here at Quinnipiac University. Um, a little bit about Quinnipiac. We are located in Hamden, Connecticut. We're about 15 minutes outside the city of New Haven, about an hour and a half away from New York and about an hour and a half away from Boston. So we're right in the middle of those two pop, um, of those two locations. A little bit of what I'm gonna talk about is our three campuses, our population, our academic, programs that we have available as well as the admissions process. So one of our three campuses is our Mount Carmel campus. This is where you live as a first and second year student and take the host of your academic classes. When you become a junior and senior, you'll move up to our York Hill campus. There we have our Rocky Top Student Center, our sporting arena for ice hockey and basketball as well as our housing for upperclassmen. Quinnipiac does have a three-year residential policy, so we're expecting students to live on campus for all three years before moving off in that senior year. And then our last campus is our North Haven campus, which is our Center for Medicine, Nursing, and Health Science Studies. Our law school and school education is also located on that campus. So for students who are interested in occupational therapy, physical therapy, physician assistant, nursing, or law and education, definitely campus that you should see if you come down to visit Quinnipiac. Now, um, Quinnipiac is a medium-sized institution. We have 10,000 students, 7,000 um, undergraduate students, 3,000 graduate students in a 16 to one ratio. So for every 16 students, there's one professor. This is about 24 students per class. 
So it's nice that you have that intimacy in your classrooms. Um, your your professor is going to know you by name, and you're never taught by a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant. So we have over 140 clubs and organizations available on campus. We are Division One and 21 athletics. Ice hockey is a premier sport for Quinnipiac. Um, students do go to the games. The Quinnipiac versus Yale game is very popular. Our students are all about it. We have club sports too, so you happen to play a sport in high school, not necessarily going to play on that Division One level. You have that available to you as well as intramural sports, pre-professional clubs, Greek life, as well as study abroad opportunities and domestic opportunities for students to go other places within the United States to study. Now, this is a breakdown of our academic programs. You have 58 majors, 48 minors, and 20 dual degree programs. Now, dual degree programs means that you're able to get your master's and undergraduate degree in an accelerated amount of time. Um, we have nine different schools with majors spread across those nine different schools. Also, a lot of our programs are either three plus one or four plus one, meaning three years of the undergraduate degree, one year of the master's program. So here's a list. It's not an exhaustive list. Um, there are some programs that are not on here within our School of Health Sciences that are considered um, accelerated dual degree programs. And you can take a look at that on our website. I'll leave the link in the chat. Um, so applying to Quinnipiac, you can apply to Quinnipiac using the common application or the Quinnipiac application, whichever one you choose is entirely up to you. The common application allows you to apply to more than one at school at once, which is nice. So some of our deadlines, which are really important. Um, so the deadline for early action is November 15th. So it's highly recommended that students who are applying health sciences, students who are applying um, to dual degree or are wanting to be considered for dual degree programs, and then students who um, are wanting to hear a little earlier that they apply by that November 15th deadline, it is non-binding. So you are not expected to commit to Quinnipiac. If you are loving us and you want to commit early and we're your first, second, and last choice, then you want to apply by that November 5th, that November 1st, excuse me, deadline, which is binding. So we'd be expecting you to commit. Um, we no longer have early action too, but we do have regular admissions and the deadline for that is February 1. So you can apply again using the common application or the Quinnipiac application. What we're looking for is a high school transcript. We're looking for two to three letters of recommendations. Tests optional for most majors except for our physician assistant program, as well as our dual degree in law. Um, so it's the Juris Doctorate degree, so you can do three years of the undergraduate degree and then three years of the JD degree. Those programs do require test scores. Everything else you can go test optional for. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Kayla. And uh, next up is Fairfield University. Just sharing my screen now. Okay, hey, we're good. How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Mark Stacey, and I'm an admissions counselor over at Fairfield U. Excited to be here talking to you all today. I'm a recent grad, class of 2021, and now an alumni in the office. So uh, I'll start a little bit this presentation. I'll kind of go through briefly and talk about um, our location first. So we're located in the heart of Fairfield County, Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, we sit on about 212 acres of land or so, um, about a mile from downtown Fairfield, which is home to a lot of great restaurants and shops, um, and only about two miles away from Fairfield Beach, as you see here, where a lot of students will get the chance to live uh, their senior year. The great thing about our location is not only our proximity um, to some stuff within Fairfield, including the beach and town, but um, some our proximity to some major cities. So we're not too far from New York City, about an hour, hour and 15 minute train ride, um, only 40 miles, not too far outside of Boston, um, and as well as Philadelphia and DC too. So the proximity to the city, as well as um, Boston, and including Stanford, Connecticut, um, really gives students uh, an opportunity to kind of branch out, make some connections with alumni in the field, um, in the field that they choose, and then also is really great for internships. 
we are a Jesuit university, so obviously a lot of opportunities um, for service on, on campus. Um, Jesuit university kind of, um, with that being said, we, we fall under, uh, we do have some core values to keep in mind, being, being magist, uh, men and women for others, kind of doing more, giving back to the community, and really putting meaning to the things that our students are learning in the classroom. Um, also care personnel, kind of taking care of the entire person, so mind, body, and spirit, and educating the whole person. Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of opportunities for service, both on campus, off campus, even some virtual options now. Some of our students have done domestic and international immersion trips, going to places all over the country to kind of give back in communities in um, Santa Fe, New Mexico, San Diego, Philadelphia, um, Kentucky, um, kind of all over the country. And then we've had students even go to the Equ uh, Dominican Republic and Ecuador for some international trips. Um, this is just a quick um, Fairfield by the numbers. So I'll touch on a couple of them. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. So um, you're gonna really get that chance to create a relationship with your professor and kind of hone in on that relationship and really get a holistic educational experience. Our average class size is about 20. Typically we cap it at around 30. So you won't really be in a class too large um, sitting in you know, a lecture hall, kind of having a teacher lecture at you. We like to have that kind of you know, hands-on experience with the professor where you really get to know them, which I think goes kind of a long way um, when it comes to your academics. Definitely a smaller to medium sized school, 4,000 undergrad students, a little over 1,000 grad students, so about 5,000 students or so. Um, but that really helps for our community. Again, it's a school where you won't really know everyone necessarily, but definitely recognize a lot of familiar faces. Um, a very homey school with a lot of smiling faces, so a lot of different ways to get involved. As you can see at the bottom, um, over 100 plus student organizations and clubs um, that pretty much range from anything you can think of. Um, we also do have a few different tiers of sports. So we're a D1 school competing in the MAC conference, but we also do have club sports, a little less intense as far as practice schedule and, comp and competition schedules go, and then obviously intramurals as well. Um, we also do have 46 undergraduate majors. So I'll touch upon a few of them here. Our four main schools here are College of Arts and Sciences, Charles F. Dolan School of Business, the Egan School of Nursing and Health Studies, and School of Engineering. Um, College of Arts and Sciences being our largest in terms of the amount of majors offered. So some of the more popular ones being communication, biology, psychology. Charles F. Dolan School of Business, we just built a brand new facility on campus in 2019. So that houses a lot of our business students, real state of the art facility. Um, and we do have career counselors that kind of work with students in each of the different schools to kind of help, again, connect them with alumni, people in their desired field um, and help them with things as basic as resume and cover letter writing and then finding internships and jobs post-grad. Um, so a lot of hands-on, one-on-one help um, within each of these schools. Egan School of Nursing and Health Studies, uh, we were just recently voted number one school, uh, number one nursing program in the state of Connecticut, which has been a great honor. Um, so our nursing program is our only direct entry program, a little bit more competitive. So we do suggest that if you're applying to nursing, applying early action or early decision. Again, students in the nursing program will get a lot of hands-on work, clinical experience as early as their sophomore year. Um, our nursing building is also fairly new and has a simulation lab. So students kind of get to use that on campus um, and then also do some work um, within uh, surrounding hospitals in the area. Our School of Engineering is our youngest school. Um, so you'll see the majors there off from the bottom, um, but our engineering students, again, more STEM-based majors, um, but we'll have the chance to kind of take courses in a lot of different areas. The one thing I'd like to note um, with this four panel slide here is um, you're not just gonna take courses in your desired field. So if you're a marketing major, sure, you'll take your marketing courses, but you'll have the chance to take courses in a lot of different interdisciplinary areas. Um, again, kind of aligning with our Jesuit ideals and our educating the whole person. Um, we like our students to have definitely a well-rounded education. Again, making meaning of the things that they're learning um, and not just kind of good at one thing. It also makes it very easy to major minor across schools. So often you'll see a communication major with a minor in uh, finance or um, a minor in information systems and a nursing major with a minor in Spanish or another language or pretty much anything. Um, our core curriculum does really make it easy for students to major minor across different fields, which is great because it kind of allows them to create their own major minor in that sense. Skip that video. And I'll go briefly over some of the components we um, do require. So we are a common app school. So we do require high school transcripts, um, looking at your rigorous courses, kind of how you challenge yourself in the classroom, how you balance that counselor recommendation, personal essay, and the optional components. Um, we do have optional interviews that are done with our senior fellow team, a team of current seniors. Um, that are at Fairfield. So always a great opportunity to show interest. And then we are test optional. We've been that way for quite some time now. Um, so that really wasn't the COVID thing. 
Um, I like to say, if you feel as if your test scores reflect who you are as a student, go ahead and submit them if you're super proud of them. If not, you're not a great test taker. I wasn't a great test taker when I was applying to college. Um, you don't have to, we won't necessarily red flag your application. That's pretty much all I have for you all. Here's a brief overview of some of our um, deadlines. So early action being November 1st, which is creeping up early decision, November 15th, obviously early decision being binding in the sense that Fairfield's your absolute number one school, your first, second, third, fourth, fifth choice. If you love it here, you're buying your sweatshirt on the way out of your tour. Um, early decision is your way to go, but it is binding in that sense. So obviously a conversation to have with your counselor, your parent, guardian, et cetera. Uh, and then our early decision two is January 15th and regular decision being the same day with of course, May 1 being our national candidate reply day. Um, we do offer merit scholarships to all students based on um, just their application, they don't have to apply. And we give out about $12,000, $26,000 a year in that. And that is pretty much all I have for you all. If you have any questions, um, I can drop my email in the chat. You can find it on our website at fairfield.edu, but happy to answer and kind of assist in any way that I can with the application process. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. I'd now ask our panelists to come back on camera and we have a few minutes for some round robin style Q&A before we wrap up this session. And our first question is, what advice uh, would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask our panelists to respond in the same order that they presented. So Megan, you're up first. Thank you. I would say take a deep breath because um, I realize this can be a stressful process um, and utilize your resources. Uh, right now you have a lot of events being emailed to you, whether it be campus visits, open houses, virtual events. Um, you have perhaps counselors visiting your school and then your school counselor. I would utilize all of your resources to narrow down the list of schools that you'd like to submit applications to and then just pay attention to the deadlines so you know when things are due by and you can prepare with your school counselor to um, send everything in on time if, as long as you pay attention to deadlines and utilize your uh, resources you should be relatively stress free, free hopefully <laughs> so i would emphasize everything that megan just said that is all phenomenal advice um but i would say yeah make a list of you know everything that you're looking for in your college process in your college journey and then the schools that you're looking at and kind of, you know, make those checks or, you know, X's of what they're, you're going to be able to achieve on those campuses. Um, I would also say, again, deadlines, make sure that you're paying attention to when you're submitting the application, when the deadlines are, if you're going early action, early decision, regular decision, just make sure that you're being mindful of those deadlines. Um, and then always ask questions. So ask questions of folks like us. We're waiting to hear from you and see how we can support you through your process. And then I would say, lastly, just visit campuses. If you think you may want to go to that campus and you have the chance to visit, go and visit that campus. Um, most of us uh, on this call are probably taking in-person or definitely doing virtual. Um, so definitely, definitely, definitely visit, visit, visit. Um, everyone's already mentioned some good tips already, um, but I would just say, you know, take your time, but be on time and don't be afraid to reach out to your admissions counselor because that's literally your go-to. I would say do your research, um, make a pros and cons list, visit the campus. Definitely, that's going to be your home for the next four years, ask the right questions. Um, and definitely do either an overnight or day visit if possible. That's actually something that I oversee at UHeart as well. And that's something I always encourage. Um, shadow uh, in you know, lecture halls, classrooms, um, but yeah, definitely do your research. I think a lot of the good advice has already been given. I was going to say to make sure that you visit the campus. Um, sometimes you apply to a school based on name brand or based on like your, your peers experience or family members experience, but it's really important to visit and get your own um, personalized experience on that campus. So I would say to visit. Tough going last on a question like this, all that good stuff was taken. Um, I agree with what everyone said, I would say, also just be yourself throughout the application process. Obviously, the schools want to see who you are. Um, when it comes to the personal assignment, things like that, you know, make sure you're, you're being true to yourself. And then ask questions, reach out to us, that's what we're here for. Um, also, also just showing interest. I feel as if all the counselors in the room um, could agree. Obviously, looking at our prospective schools, we like seeing students who reach out, make the effort, um, make it known that they want to be here. 
Excellent. Thank you all. Some wonderful advice. Uh, so our next question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, I would say that WCSU has a lot of great opportunities for students at an affordable cost. Um, this program where we offer New York students in-state tuition um, is great because we're right on the New York border, um, just about five minutes from New York. So not New York City, New York, the state, um, about two hours from New York City. Uh, but it, it gets you a lot of great opportunities and we're a very close-knit community. So the more involved you get on campus, the more you meet our staff and faculty and the more resources you have. It's really just a great campus to be a part of. Um, I'm a little biased because I'm an alum, but I loved my experience. So I would just say um, that we are a wonderful community um, that supports the state of Connecticut. And I think the campus itself is very unique because we're in a very quiet residential um, kind of rural area of the state. Uh, but everything that you see basically in stores is Connecticut or is UConn. Um, so I think in that way, it is a very nice and mid-sized campus in the grand scheme of things, um, but it's nestled in a very traditional New England town. Um, so, but it's a wonderful community. Um, one thing I can say about us is that we are um, a small school and um, we do provide a lot of expert experiential learning. I'm sorry, I always trip on that word. Um, but it's that's something good to remember. Um, you're actually like in the field while you're studying. Um, but yeah, that's what I can think of. One thing about the University of Hartford, um, we're big on community, we're big on um, inclusive. Um, your professors will definitely know who you are. We have um, smaller class sizes. Um, so that's good for, you know, if you need extra help or anything. And then also we have a lot of student support services um, for first generational students, first year students. And there's just something always going on on campus. The other Kayla keeps stealing my answers, but... <laughs> just joking but no i would say the sense of community um on quinnipiac's campus as well i me being the um counselor for the five boroughs of new york whenever i bump into alumni or family members of alumni i was like well how was such and such experience and it's always that they loved it and i think it's because of that sense of community and you can feel that once you visit our campus i think fairfield's uh location is pretty unique we're more of a suburban campus but um, have the beach really close by where students get the chance to live um, and then also not too far outside the city so students can wake up in their beach home and then also be in the city during the day for an internship and then wind up back there at night so I think um, that along with kind of our smaller to medium-sized school um, definitely a lot of ways to get involved definitely a lot of ways to make it feel uh, like home. Wonderful thank you all so we have time for one more question uh, and I'll ask our panelists to uh, be real quick in their responses, but the question is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admission process? Um, so trying to think of a myth, um, having trouble, but I would just say, I feel like sometimes students are afraid to ask us questions um, in meetings or like when we visit high schools, um, they seem very shy. Um, we're all very approachable, we're all very friendly. Um, so your admissions counselor is definitely, you know, your ally in this process. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, don't be shy. We're just here to help. So yeah, I probably would echo what Megan said about the struggle and the fine one. I Googled them and I feel like all the ones that I just saw are myths. Uh, the first one that I saw is the more extracurriculars, the better. This boils down to quality versus quantity. So I mean, I think sometimes students are like, I need to do everything in my school and in my community because that's the only way that I'm going to get into my schools. Um, but honestly, get involved with the things that you're passionate about. Um, that is honestly what we want to see. Um, we don't want you to see do every single thing that you can do at the school, but more so the things that drive you and really get you to want to go to the university that you're looking to attend to and do the program that you're looking for. Um, so that is one. That was the first one that I see, and that is definitely a myth. Um, so do what you're, what you're passionate about. Um, I can agree with um, both Megan and Dan. They pretty much summed up and said everything that needs to be said. Um, so one of the things that I find hilarious is um, students think that like this big scary person is reading your application. I always say I'm not scary. I'm super friendly. You know, ask me questions. Um, and yeah, just take a deep breath. <laughs> I 
I would say um, one myth that I would like to debunk that pre-med is a major. It's not a major, it's a track. Um, so that's like one way to keep yourself informed that you will have a major, maybe biology or something, and then you will follow a pre-med track and get the courses you need for medical school. I think a myth is that a bad test score or a bad grade, one bad test score, one bad grade can kind of ruin your whole college application process. Um, I think we take a lot of different things into account. So don't necessarily freak out um, if something like that happens. We have to look at a lot of different things when reviewing applications. So fabulous. Well, thank you all so much. That does bring us to the end of this session. So I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to our presenters for all the great information that you shared. Thank you to our audience. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick survey. We do appreciate your feedback. We encourage you to check the schedule for more sessions that are happening as part of this college fair. And you'll be able to find a recording from this session and others uh, online at strivescan.com slash SFP. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your night.